G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, today, I want to show you the progress on the waterfall tank. I did a little bit on the live stream, and if you haven't watched the live stream, then I'll show you what I did. Um, <coughs> hopefully my directional microphone is working really good, because one of my neighbours is mowing their lawn, and they have the loudest lawnmower I've ever heard in the southern hemisphere. Can you hear it? Yeah, you definitely can hear it. I'm hoping that it's muffled with the amazing microphone that I own. It's like they've taken the muffler off the lawnmower. One thing I love about my lawnmowers is they're quite quiet. Maybe that's because I look after them. So that's, that's actually kind of a lie. One of the lawnmowers I don't look after. Alright, I turn the camera around and we'll have a look. Not only do we have to battle the sound of the lawnmower, we have to battle how loud this tank is at the moment. Alright guys, so I added stand pipes. I don't know if... No, that, were they already there? In the last video? Yeah, I think they were. Oh, anyway. I added a pump, I found some old um, uh, canister filter fittings and I've actually got the elbow up there which is cool. Um, the only problem with this is I kind of need to drill a hole in it because if the power goes out the top tank siphons or I need to cut that pipe up there a bit shorter. Um, it's only in the shed so it doesn't really matter if it siphons but I would prefer it didn't. Um, I need to try find some pipes for the bottom because I don't know if you can hear it with the microphone but it is so loud. Like when you're walking up to the shed with the door closed it sounds like there's something leaking in here but it doesn't sound good. Um, anyway, I've got a 400... Uh, oh. Is it any... Is it 400? Uh, it's only a 250 watt heater. That'll do, but this whole rack is only like how many liters? One, two, three, four, five, five to six hundred liters. This says max six hundred liters, so we might be right. Also, don't forget it's warming up, so like in the warmer months, you don't need as much heater. Um, I need to try to find the suction cup for it, but for now. We can just put it in there to get a bit of heat going. Um, it's actually not that cold. I've got a thermometer here. Uh, it's on 19 degrees. It was on 21 degrees yesterday. So the cold night has uh, dropped the temperature a bit. Anyway, I'm going to try to find some offcuts of PVC. Because <clears throat> one, I need to make a, a little tool to bring the water level of this one up so it's rimless and two oh two I need to make some pipes so they're hitting the water let me find something all right so I found a pipe for the for this one I don't know whether to put one on this one as well or not but I don't think I need it like it's pretty good level the only thing is when I put the pipe on there and it like stops bouncing in that it might actually I might need to make one of these so all it is so off cut of 25 mil pipe and I've just cut a line in it and I just need to slip this over which is probably more of a two-handed job but I'm not even pointing the camera at it sorry guys so now, I hope that's enough to get it up. It might not be because see the gap at the back there? That's still going to let the water in. But hopefully that gap is small enough that I can bring it up. But it, it doesn't look like it's going to be small enough. I can bring that up. I'll just play with it. 
If that doesn't work, what I'll do, um, I'll go to Bunnings and I'll get a couple of collar sleeves because that way the collar sleeve won't have that big gap at the back. It might get to the right height, you know. That one's way quieter than these two now as well, which is bizarre. A little bit more. I think it's going to work, guys. I just have to put it a lot higher. Oh, I'm tripping over. I should put shoes on. should keep my shed tidy too, guys. Look how clean my shed is. Have we got zoom on? Yeah. Look how clean my shed is and then there's just like a load of junk in this one aisle. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys but I want to try and make like a planter box around this. Because I spoke to Paul at Morley Aquariums who is a tank builder. Shout outs to him. Um, he said his only worry with this tank is the fact that somebody could walk through that door there and bump into it and that's when he's worried that it would break as far as it holding water he didn't have any concern and that was pretty reassuring for me because um, he's got a lot of history building tanks um, we've got that water level so close It's like borderline good enough. Oh yeah, I think we did it. That's cool. So what I think I might do is I'll get some new PVC. I'll cut this one a bit longer, but I'll, I'll still have that collar on the top. And I'll probably cut that one five mil shorter and put a collar on it. So that way they're both adjustable. The top, the one at the top, I'm probably just going to leave the water level as low as it is. I don't know. It doesn't really matter if the top one's not rimless. I'm still on the fence about using the top one as a filter, but I don't really want to. I want the tank space. But not, you guys will obviously know what I decide on that in the next few days because it's pretty much almost ready for fish. Alright guys, I got water on the ground. Let me explain to you why. It wasn't a splash, it is actually the tanks overflowing. So, I changed my mind. I put a collar on the top and um, I was tuning it to get the water level right on the um, brim. But one key factor I forgot about. <clears throat> if you remember when I set this tank up, I I leveled it off this glass here and if you remember the top wasn't level you might not remember that far back but anyway so the top of this cabinet glass cabinet isn't level so uh, I don't know why I'm calling it a cabinet but I am um, so this tank here is sitting on top of those ends which means the top of that tank isn't level now you guys can't see it because the um, the light is up there but basically we've got like eight mil gap here and no gap there borderless there um, and that's because I got these level so um, I'm probably just gonna drop it down so there's like a good gap so that way you won't see the line as much um, I know it's only little it doesn't really matter but <coughs> It is what it is. At least these ones here are perfect. Anyway, we've got some pipes here. So this tank might, it might overflow. It might do something weird when I add these pipes. Cause if anybody knows about PVC, when you change like um, how much air is going in and put this under water, creating air pockets in the pipes, like things happen and stuff changes and um, we're basically going to find out right now if stuff is going to change for the negative alright it doesn't look like it so 
I've got to figure out what filtration I'm going to put on the end of these. I'm kind of thinking about... I don't know. Uh, if I just get a standard sponge filter and put it around that. Or I could go like a double sponge filter and... Um, I think the double sponge would still get some water flow because the bubbles would be coming up through the double sponge those bubbles that you can see there I don't know I have to order some um, sponges without filters if that makes sense I've actually got some but they're in the they're in the um, stingray tank the, uh, the the freezer filter outside some of you will know what that is alright so that that didn't actually change the water level up there so um, I've made these pipes long enough that they're almost to the bottom and that's because if you haven't caught my earlier videos I kind of just touched on it then but I didn't explain it well, I did didn't I that this is going to be my filtration see in a normal case I would probably only have that pipe to come just below the water level just to be quiet but in this case we're going all the way towards the bottom how's those for length <laughs> They're pretty similar. I didn't measure them, I just cut them. They look about the same. <clears throat> One interesting thing, but that one's got way m oh, that tank's deeper. Ignore that comment. So this tank's 350. That middle one there is 450 for some reason. Um, so it's actually three different size tanks. The one there, there's like 120 litres. The one there is like 160 litres, and then the one there is only like 70 or 80 litres. So it would be interesting to see if the fish grow at different rates being in different size tanks. But they have similar, they have the same litre vo volume because they're all in the same tank technically. And they've got the similar swim space side to side. It's only the heights that are different. I wonder if... Uh, I was going to say I wonder if that one's got a smaller floor than that one, but it looks like um, They've got the same size floor, but the angle of the glass is less It's the little things that you don't notice sometimes guys like when I first got this it took me like two days to realize that tank is bigger than that one and like looking at it now it is so obvious that it's different in size but when you get something like this and like the guy I got it off delivered it to me I was just not overwhelmed but there was just so much going on that I didn't even click alright so that is way quieter it's not as quiet as I was expecting but it's quiet enough um, we've got to run water lines to this and everything it's still quite a lot of work to do I was thinking I might get um, the an ATO smart top up unit just to do like a product test for you guys but I have automatic water changes this thing is going to be automatically topping itself up anyway <clears throat> the only thing I will say if you want one of those smart ATO top up units I have actually used them before and they are killer they are a wicked system um, a, a product recommendation without you guys actually seeing me use it but I promise I've used one before Anyone who's friends with me before YouTube, um, my old shrimp rack had it. But um, being a YouTuber now in Western Australia, a shrimp rack isn't really an option. Uh, I'm super stoked with that. We got rid of that oh, that bloody Niagara Falls sound. Um, you guys probably couldn't hear it on the camera how loud it actually was. And also the other thing was when it's splashing you can already see just there uh, it comes off pretty easy but there's already it was already starting to get calcium build up and it's only been running for like 48 hours um, check that heaters on I don't know where the light is yep she's on I might try to find the bracket for that I want to pin that at the back real low because if, if, if I clean any of these tanks, oh, 
Maybe I should put the heater in a different tank. Nah. One thing that sucks, guys, is the power leads have to run over the front. I can't get them. The only way I can put them through the side is if I cut the ends off and get new ends. But... I don't really like putting new ends on electrical stuff that's in water. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I've got to go edit it right now and upload it. Because, um... I'm a day behind in my videos. I, I didn't record a video yesterday. Um, I, what did I do? Oh, I had a PCS meeting um, with the committee. So, if you are in Western Australia, we've booked in a swap meet. Um, it's not this year, unfortunately. We don't have enough time to organize, do the groundwork to organize sellers and everything. But I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but there is going to be a, a swap meet for Perth Cichlid Society in January. Um, that's exciting for me. The last swap meet, I had a ball. I loved it. Um, I walked away with like $700, which is awesome. Um, but not only that, um, it was way more of a chatty, how are you going? having fun kind of vibe than the auctions. The auctions are a bit too serious for me and dragged out. The swap meet is like one hour of hustle and bustle and then pretty much job done. Um, we actually, last time we actually packed up early because there was no one there. And I fully understand that because a swap meet, you want to get there early so you get the bargains. And that's, it's, it was just exciting. Um, and also the last swap meet, I took two flower horns and I, I sold them for two hundred dollars each. Um, so, in, if you guys don't know, like my flower horns, I sell them for three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty dollars each. So I literally sold two flower horns for half price. But I was happy to do that because it was there was no groundwork. It was easy. Um, and also like. I was doing bags of Africans for like $3 each. It was really cool. Um, I walked away with, what, what I say, $700 about that, um, which is really handy to pay bills and stuff. Um, and even though I didn't get my normal price for the fish, like that much money in one day, I'm happy with that, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a bulk buy, but not bulk, but nobody's buying bulk. It's just everybody's buying anything. Anyway, you guys get what I mean. Um, it's really good when I can inject that sort of money into like or the power bill because um, I like to be able to throw a huge chunk on it and get it in credit. Um, but anyway, I, I probably share too much about the money side of things, but I don't mind. I think you guys like to hear about it. I know with other YouTubers I watch when they build cars and stuff, um, I, I'm always curious about the money side. So I, I, I like to share it. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more, hit that little red button down to the that side. I don't remember what side it is. Is it left or right? You're watching there, so it's left? Yeah, I think it's on your left, but I'm pointing right. Peace out.